time, we have the Astrophotic Tonic to come and talk to us about thermocoagulation as the treatment of great cephalus time. at Leuven in Belgium. Uh, I would like to say that I have nothing to disclose. Um, at first I would like to say uh, we know that Ferkus venus is a very common pathology uh, which occurs uh, very uh, common in this uh, society. About 20 to 40 percent of the population will have some kind of variable experience. Um, in the last decade, a lot of new therapies, um, are, um, therapy modalities are co coming up since 1999. A lot of endovenous treatments um, were uh, there. It was a minimal invasive treatment. Uh, which is also uh, proven that it's uh, giving less complications. There are a lot of uh, variations in these endovenous treatments. We already have the radiofrequency ablation, uh, like Venus, uh, the EVLA, the foam, the steam sclerosis, and also, uh, as you heard before this morning, Clarivane and uh, Cephium. This is uh, another treatment uh, which is called thermocoagulation. It's the EVRF system. Um, it's a type of thermocoagulation uh, which will done uh, heating of the vein wall, and this is, will cause endothelial destruction. Um, after the endothelial destruction, there will be a vein uh, contraction, and uh, at the end, a fibrotic sealing of the vessel. Um, the working principle: uh, it, there is a, um, a generation generator. Then we will. Um, have the catheter, it's a disposable catheter or a needle, um, which has a non insulated tip. So this will generate the energy, and the tip can be pulled back at about uh, five um, millimeters at a time. There are different uh, types of uh, EVRF available. For the small varicose veins, we have a pen that you can use. Then we have um, a hand catheter, which we can use for varicose veins from 1 to 4 millimeters. And then we have the uh, CR45I catheter, which, is, uh, which can be used for the surface veins. So we can treat uh, three different types of veins with one uh, machine. Um, in this case, I would uh, talk about the EVRF. Uh, the CR45I catheter, which is used for uh, great cephalus vein and small cephalus vein reflux from a diameter from 3 to 12 or 15 uh, in the highest millimeter. Uh, the vein cannot be too tortuous or too superficial. We also use it for recurrence veins and also for uh, bigger tributaries. To contraindication, classical um, acute thrombosis and also if your diameter is too small or too big. Um, we can do it on a local spiner or a general anesthetic. We use an anti trendalender position to puncture the, knee, the vein. Uh, we do it about uh, 10 centimeters below the knee or at least 15 centimeters above the foot uh, for the small cephalus vein. We use a 19 gauge needle and a six French sheet, which is uh, available in one uh, package. <clears throat> so this is the classical way of uh, treating. Uh, we position the catheter at 1.5 to 2 centimeters from the junction in the groin behind the osteomal gastric vein. It's a very flexible catheter, so you will get through uh, quite easily. Um, we inject to the sense liquid, um, and we use a lot, uh, 10 centimeters per centimeter about 500 cc uh, for a long uh, GSP. 
Well, this is the CR uh, 45 high catheter. <coughs> um, the catheter is connected to the generator. And at the generator, you will have three different types of treatment that you can choose. Um, so we, you, we choose the 45i, and then you will have um, the possibility to change the watts on the machine. Uh, normally, we use 25 watts, <coughs> which is uh, good for an uh, average GSP. If it's smaller or for an accessory, you can diminish the watts. So here you have the positioning of the catheter. It's also good visible, that ultrasound. You see, when you do a hunter, for free. You use a lot of tumor cells around the vein. Uh, we always uh, recheck the position of the catheter after applying the tumor cells. And we start by retracting uh, 0.5 centimeters every three weeks. You can adjust your uh, watt according to the diameter of the vein. Normally it's uh, 25 watt, but um, normally we have for a GSV about 250 to 300 joules per centimeter. Uh, a markation on the catheter will show you when you need to uh, retract the sheet. So here you have retracting if you are, uh, you have a sign on the catheter which tells you when you need to do that. Uh, Post-operative care, so we use compression stocking for one week, day and night, and then again two weeks only in the daytime, especially when we combine the motor excisions. Uh, we have immediate mobilization and we do, we give low molecular weight heparin only according to uh, a history of DVT or other risk factors. There is a clinical checkup at one week and then an ultrasound at one month and six months. So post-operative ultrasound shows you a nice closure with still an open epigastric vein. We did a trial in Leuven, um, so it was a pilot study. We did 40 uh, GSVs that were included from November 2011 until March uh, 2012. There was a follow-up uh, after one week, just clinical, and then one month to six months clinical and ultrasound follow-up. Uh, exclusion criteria were uh, deep venous insufficiency, when we have a cross dilatation and more than three, two incompetent side branches, or when the diameter of the surface vein was more than 15 millimeters. Uh, Therapeutically anticoagulation, hypercoagulability, and peripheral arterial uh, occlusive disease, as well as pregnancy and patients younger than 18. Um, the primary endpoint was occlusion rate at one month, follow up according to the GLF score, which, which I uh, will explain later on, and at six months follow up. The secondary endpoint was uh, side effects, ecchymosis, pain, paresthesia, and also the use of analgetics, uh, the quality of life, and the patient satisfaction. Um, so the results were uh, 50 years was the mean age of the patient we treated uh, with preference of the female. Um, the BMI was 25. Profession was more uh, standing and sitting, but mostly uh, patients who had a standing or sitting job. Um, the C classification, we had a C 2.3 mean with 34 patients out of the 40 with C2 disease. Um, most of the patients were treated on the general anesthetic. That's because in Belgium we have tend to uh, still do it on the general. Patients are a little bit uh, afraid of uh, other types of uh, anesthesia, but also because we do uh, the phlebectomism one time. The low molecular weight was given in 11 out of 40 patients. The total energy was uh, mean 7,360 euros, and the mean length was 37 centimeters. Uh, Pre-op uh, diameter was a mean of 6.5. Um, the energetics were recorded at one week and then again at one month, and we saw that 0.7 uh, total number of energetics were used, and almost just one day after the operation. 
um, mostly paracetamol or uh, ibuprofen was used. Thank you, Moses, for the calculated with the score. So we used the area surface of your ecchymosis divided by the treated uh, length gain. But this was measured at one week post-operative, and it was very low. The capacity to work was 10 days. This is also because in Belgium, uh, patients tend to uh, do a stay home a little bit longer than uh, in some other European countries. Um, Periflavitis was one day and we had one paresthesia. Patient's uh, satisfaction score was 8.9. Uh, the quality of life was a civic 2 score. Um, so we used uh, 20 questions in four domains, pain, uh, physical, uh, psycho, uh, psychological, social, and uh, the higher the scores, the lower the health-related quality of life. Um, so this was about 35 preoperative, and it went up to 38, and then it went again down to 25 that one month. The um, pain score was a vast scale from 0 to 10. This was measured at day 2, 5, 7, and 10. And you see it was as high as 2.6 which is quite low, and then it went down to 1.6, to 0 0.6 uh, in 10 days. The occlusion rate was um, given a score by HLF, which means that uh, level 0 is no occlusion, but still a reflux in the vein and unchanged uh, diameter. A level 1A is a partial occlusion with proximal reflux, 1B is partial but with reflux, without reflux. 2A, there is a complete occlusion with an unchanged uh, diameter. 2B is a diameter reduction of more than 30%. And level 3 is a reduction of more than 50%. Level 4 was a fibrotic cord uh, or the vein is not visible anymore. So at one month, we see that uh, yeah, 34, uh, 34 patients at a 2A, so this means it's occluded, but there is no change in diameter. Then the other uh, six patients had a 2B, so there was already a change in, in the diameter. At six months, we had uh, one patient where there was no sign anymore of the treatment. Uh, two patients had 1B, so that means that there is partial um, occlusion, but there is no reflux. Um, then we had four patients with 2B and 22 patients had a 3, so that means that it's occluded and the vein is, uh, more, is more than 50% uh, closed and in diameter reduction more than 50%. And uh, four is fibrotic cord. So three veins were now occluded, so we had a 92.5 uh, occlusion rate, uh, one with no occlusion. I'm not sure how I can explain this, probably it's a technical failure. Two, point, two patients had a GLF score of 1B. There was only a small, narrow lumen, which is remaining without reflux, and we expect that this would be closed at 12 months. So we have overall very good results with a low ecchymosis score, which is very good pain scores and a very good occlusion of 92.5%. So we can say that um, BVRF is a safe and efficient treatment with low pain score, uh, no ecchymosis, and a high quality of life, and an occlusion rate at six months of 92.5%. Thank you very much.